last year was pretty crazy and even though we are past the worst of things I think it's safe to say we need to be a little more prepared for the unexpected than we used to be. Infrastructure is just not something we can take for granted anymore. Without being too paranoid, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things I used to prepare for different potential situations, explain my thinking, and look at some cool tech I picked up to help. What I have here is the i4A T-Rex. Basically, it's a huge battery, a giant power bank, like some of you used to charge your cell phones, but bigger, smarter, and with more tricks up its sleeve. While on the box it, I need to explain my threat model, what risks I'm trying to mitigate. Then you can see how my model matches up with yours and what ideas you think you can use. As most of you know, I live in Shenzhen, China. Shenzhen is a very new city. 40 years ago, it was just a small fishing village. Now, it's a huge modern city of 14 million. It's also gotten pretty expensive to live here because I need space for all my tools and the workshop to shoot my videos in. I rent a rundown townhouse way on the outskirts of the city. It's what Americans would call a McMansion. Big but poorly, but very poorly constructed. I was able to rent it pretty cheaply because the roof leaks, there was no kitchen, no hot water, no air conditioning, and slowly I've been working on fixing some of that and making it a bit more livable. But obviously I don't want to put too much into it because the lease is only for a few years because the neighborhood is growing so quickly. Construction is pretty much constant. The roads here are being dug up to put in new water mains, new power lines, new fiber optic cables. So power and water outages occur about once a month and usually last about half a day. While Shenzhen is not prone to any sort of natural disaster, it's not crazy that a water main could burst or something could happen to the local infrastructure to cause a water or power outage for a few days. And that's what I've been trying to prepare for. It's a pretty realistic threat model, nothing too paranoid or outlandish. And I try to do what I can to prepare for it while staying in a reasonable budget. I have a solar hot water heater on the roof which paid for itself in the, in the first year. And last month, I added a 2,000 liter water tank. Let me show you how the neighborhood plumbing uncles put it in. The total cost for the tank and installation was about 500 US dollars. I split the cost with the landlord. So not too bad since it means I don't have to worry about the toilets not flushing when I have sponsors and advertisers over for meetings. So I can go a little while without water, but I still have to think about electricity. Okay, I have my AC outlet here. I have a USB. I have the 12 volt output and the AC input and the solar input. I want to try out the solar input, so I'm going to bring the solar panel upstairs and test it. Okay, the nice thing is that even though this is a large, high capacity setup, it breaks down into multiple parts, so it's still portable enough for me to carry up the stairs. Now, obviously, normally I can keep it topped up with the with mains power, but if there's an emergency for more than a couple of days, I'll need solar. Let's see how that works.
I've got my light meter. It's a pretty cloudy day. Uh, it says 376 lakhs. That's why there's only 25 watts of power going in the solar. Okay, let's leave that to charge. And let me show you what I use to get the most out of a battery like this. Okay, so why a giant battery like the i4A T-Rex and not a gas generator? I've got nothing against generators. They're great, but they have very specific requirements because you need to store gasoline with, with them. They need to be kept in a separate structure away from the house due to risk of fire, which makes them out of the question for apartments. You can't store the gasoline in a generator. It will corrode the lines and they use quite a bit of gas or other fuels about 12 liters or 3 gallons a day, which means eventually you have to go get more, which as a small person might not be the best or safest idea depending on the situation I'm facing and why there is no power and how people are handling that. If things are bad, I want to be able to hold up in my house, not go out scrunching for supplies. Even very quiet generators make a pretty distinct noise, which means everyone knows you have power, and they probably don't. Again, if you are a larger person or live someplace where gun ownership is legal, this might not matter. But for me, planning ahead for unknown circumstances, a lot of my risk management strategy is not advertising to the neighborhood that I've managed that risk and I'm doing okay because that's just asking for trouble. I want to keep a very low profile until services are restored, even if that means getting by without a lot of comforts. Same things goes for those of you with camping vans or cabins. The noise a gas generator makes may attract unwanted attention. But a gas generator may make good sense for you depending on where you live and what your threat model is. So it's certainly worth looking into. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under 24 hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just $2 in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. Some of you may have noticed my Monero t-shirt. For those of you who don't know, Monero is a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. I get a little every month, and some months is even paid my grocery bills. I try not to get into too much discussion about cryptocurrencies because I don't want to come off as another e-girl trying to jump on the crypto bandwagon. I'm more focused on hardware. That said, Monero is a technology I prefer and have the most confidence in. If you're a member of the Monero community and would like me to do a video on the subject. If you think I'd be a helpful voice, send a donation to the address in the description box and I'll take that as a vote of confidence. If you think it's better left to the cryptocurrency professionals and maybe my image isn't a good fit, no offense taken. I'll take a lack of donation as indication to leave the evangelism up to others. Okay, it's cloudy out. It's going to take all day to charge. And I have a review to do. In my opinion, the key to using a backup battery like the i 4 a T-Rex is careful power management. Now, generating your own power, installing permanent solar panels on your home or van is a huge and complex subject well outside the scope of this video. We're talking about just enough power to get by camping or in an emergency for a few days. In my opinion, one of the main mistakes people make is trying to use battery power in similar quantities and in a similar fashion as they use mains power and scaling up their hardware until they can do that. 
that gets pretty expensive, large, and complicated. I'd rather carefully ration my power usage during an emergency, use what I have in a smarter way, so I can get by with less hardware and a lower profile. Now, the i4 T Rex has a billion inverter, so you can easily get plenty of AC power out of it. Plug appliance into it, etc. And that's very important. I'll be using mine as a UPS, an, an interruptible power supply, so my cameras and servers don't go offline when I lose power. But in my opinion, it's best to limit how much you use the inverter during a blackout. Anytime you go through an inverter, you lose power. And Anything designed to run off AC current like space heaters and TVs are usually not designed to be power efficient, so not the kind of thing you want to run off battery for very long. Something like this, you don't just plug it into your house wiring, crank up the heat or AC and sit around watching TV in a t-shirt like everything is normal. The tech is very smart. But that's an inefficient way to use it, and you are limiting yourself if you do use it that way. Here in Asia, historically, fuel has been scarce. If you watch Korean or Japanese dramas, you notice the use of small space heaters that people gather around. It's the same here in China. Employees in offices may work in full winter coats. It does not really make sense to us to heat the entire building, and often older buildings are concrete or brick with poor insulation, so this would be very difficult. But as we recently saw in Texas, a cold snap in a historically warm place can be devastating. How can we prepare for once in a decade or so event realistically without breaking the bank? By putting the watts where they will do the most good directly into people in the form of thermal energy. This is a little trick I picked up from my buddy Hamdat here on YouTube the, the upside of 5 volts is that you don't have to buy the proprietary batteries from the company. He does a lot of things, including making underwater colonies for hamsters. But he put me onto the trick of heated clothing and suitcase batteries like the T-Rex. I'll put his link in the description box. So this is heated long underwear rather than hit a whole room and deal with all that energy rising up and hitting the ceiling, looking out for windows and doors, you put the energy where it needs to be and only where it needs to be, your body, and add layers on top of it or even just an emergency mylar ship to keep from licking that thermal energy. No, don't worry, it's only 5 volts and insulated, so it can't electrocute you or anything if it gets rent. And it's incredibly efficient compared to hitting a space with something like this and an inverter. Likewise, people get stuck on their cars on the road in a snowstorm, your car will run out of gas running the engine and hitting the whole interior. But this can keep you warm and toasty for days on the charge of a car battery hose. Heating clothes are fantastic for regular use in cold weather, but even if you live someplace warm like Texas or Shenzhen, it's a great low-cost emergency item to put in the closet and forget about. And if you're like me and like to wear small clothes even when it's a bit cool out, Heating insoles like this put enough thermal energy into your body to keep you from getting cold. What about other things? Well, as I said, I try to get the most I can out of a little bit of power, so that means not wasting it and not being showy with it when other people are without. 
one of the best things you can do is take advantage of the store power you already have. I use Makita tools or at least compatible knockoffs since they don't sponsor me and tools are expensive. So I can always count on having four or five fully charged 18 volt battery packs because I pretty much use my cordless tools every day. If you've got a set of cordless power tools, you'll want to get something like this that converts their voltage to 5 volts USB and 12 volts barrel jack. I also have a 12 volt charger so I can charge the i4 t rex with solar power and then use that to charge the two batteries for more portable power. I also have this light, but I usually don't use them during power outages just when I'm working. For outages, I use a small headlamp. It puts all the lights where I need it and none when I don't. And let me save power for other things. It also means I don't have a string of bright 12 volt lights drawing attention and letting people know I have plenty of power. While I do have filtered water, I also have this 12 volt ozone generator so I can cheat water if I want to. While it's pretty unlikely I'll ever freeze in Shenzhen, it does get very, very hot and power outages are most common during heat waves. While I'd probably be okay, I'd like to be comfortable and I need to make sure Momo does not get his stroke. Since only a few of my rooms are air conditioned, I get good use out of this DIY cordless fan. See, it's got an adapter on the back so I can use Makita batteries. Okay, that's the i 4 t rex and how I use it. I know it's an unconventional purchase, the sort of thing many of us would have never considered just a few years ago. But times are changing and the world is getting a little unpredictable. With a suitcase battery and a few well-chosen accessories, you have a little insurance and some protection from blackouts, brownouts, and similar issues with the power grid. The i 4 t rex is well made, easy to use, and I've got no problem recommending it if it's in your budget. If you have any questions about it, please post in the comment section. That's it for today. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Mama, move, move. Okay. okay, don't block the camera, Mama. Move, 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 move. Come to, come here, come over here. Yes, yes, come over here. Don't block the camera. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay, so I have my AC outlets here, 12 volt <laughs> output, and my USB here, and the AC oh, and the AC input. Uh, right next to it is the solar input, and I want to try out the solar input. So this is my solar panel, Mama Booth. <laughs> Who's a good girl? Who's a good puppy? So this is my solar panel. I'm going to plug it into the solar input. 